All right, once we've got the Texas Instruments BA2 financial calculator set up, let's examine some of the keys and functions that we will use frequently in our work. These functions are available on most calculators, which is good news. The bad news is that some work differently on the Texas Instruments BA2+. In addition, the calculator has some functions that set it apart, such as the ability to solve complex time value of money problems. The calculator has a steep learning curve, but such enhanced capabilities make it a great tool that will make your life easier once you become familiar with it. Let's start with the basics, calculating the product of two numbers. We will multiply 5 by 2. Hit equals, which gives us 10. Now, imagine that while carrying out this operation, we decided we wanted to multiply 5 by 7 instead of 2. We could do that by pressing CEC once, then 7, followed by the equal sign. The result is 35. CE stands for clear entry, while C is for clear. The important thing you should remember is that when we press the CEC key only once, it clears only the last entry. This means that the rest of the expression is still stored. If we press it two times, the whole previous calculation process is cleared and we will have to start over. Now, there is an alternative way to introduce a correction. We can use the arrow key, which is located just below the on-off button. Let's see how this would work out. We want to calculate the result of 5 by 2, but we change our mind and decide to switch to multiply by 27 instead of 2. We press the arrow key to delete 2. Then we type 27 and equal to obtain 135. These two alternative ways to correct your inputs are extremely important, especially when the number of digits becomes larger. Imagine that you have just started a lengthy calculation during the CFA exam involving seven or eight digit numbers and you accidentally make a mistake. Starting the whole operation over would be time-consuming, especially in a time-pressured situation. All right, moving on. Now let's examine these four operations. Calculating the square root of x, x to the power of 2, 1 divided by x, and the plus-minus key. Firstly, we need to focus on these keys because you will need them very often when solving financial problems. The second reason is that the calculator executes these operations on display only. There is no need to press the equal sign at the end of the operation. The calculator simply executes the task after we press the key. Let's see a few examples. Okay, first, we would like to obtain the square root of 100. This should be easy. I'll type 100 and we'll press the square root of x to obtain 10. Then we need to raise 2 to the power of 2. That's also a piece of cake. We just type 2 and hit x to the power of 2 to obtain 4. The third button is 1 over x. If we press 10 and then 1 over x, we should obtain 0 0.1. Why? Because 1 divided by 10 is 0 0.1. So the calculator gives you the reciprocal of 10. Finally, let's check out the plus minus key, which changes the sign of the current number we have on the display. So if we want to obtain minus 10, we input 10 and hit the plus minus key. Great! Now let's combine all these functions and solve a more complex expression. 
we would like to divide 0 0.39 by the square root of 3.15 and then multiply the result by 6.2 to the power of 2. There are two ways to tackle this problem. Let's demonstrate the first one. We start from the numerator of the expression and enter 0 0.39 divided by 3.15. Here is the tricky part, so pay attention. Before we divide, we take the square root of the denominator. As you can see on the display, the result is 1.77. This is the square root of 3.15. Then we press the multiplication sign to see that the interim result is 0.2197. We enter 6.2 and press the x to the power of 2 key to obtain 38.44. At the end, we hit the equal sign to obtain 8.4468. As we mentioned, there is a different way to solve this expression. Sometimes, when there are a lot of terms in the denominator, it's easier to start from there. Let's do that. First, we enter 3.15. Then we take the square root and hit the 1 over x key to obtain the reciprocal of the result. Finally, we will multiply by the numerator of 0 0.39 and 6.2 to the power of 2. You may wonder why this approach differs from the first one. Imagine that you have two or three terms in the denominator. Then it's easier to start from there and work your way up by multiplying with the denominator. Don't underestimate this approach. It could save you lots of precious time when you need it most. As a rule of thumb, try to avoid writing down any interim results. If you write down an interim result, then you have to put it back in the calculator. That's why there's always a chance to make an error. When you absolutely need to save some interim results, the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus has a built-in memory function. But we'll talk about this later. All right, sometimes we would want to raise a number to the power of n, where n could be a degree that differs from 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. For example, let's find the result of 1.5 raised to the power of 5. Obviously, we can't perform the calculation using the x squared key. x squared allows us to raise to the second degree. If you press it twice, you can get x to the power of 4. If you press it three times, you can get x to the power of 8, and so on. In our case, things are a bit different, and we'll need to use the y to the xth degree. Here's how it works. We enter 1.5, hit y to the power of x key, followed by 5. The result is 7.59. Great! Now let's take the nth root of a number. Here's a task. So we will look at an investment which has increased its value from $48,000 to $78,000 in a five-year period. We would like to calculate its annual compound growth rate. Here is the formula to be used. We divide the current market value by the initial investment, then take the nth root of the value and subtract one from the result. This is a very frequently tested topic at the CFA exam. Okay, so we divide $78,000 by $48,000. Then we need to take the fifth root of the result, since the number of years is equal to 5. Unfortunately, the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus does not have a built-in function that allows us to take the nth root of a number. What we can do instead is use the y to the power of x key. In this way, 
we could express the square root of x as x raised to the power of 0 0.5. The cubic square root as x raised to the power of 0 0.33. The fourth root as x to the power of 0 0.25, and so on. In our example, we need to obtain the fifth root, which is equivalent to raising a number to the power of 0 0.2, or 1 divided by 5. Then, we subtract 1 to obtain the annual compound growth rate. As you can see, it is equal to 10.2% in this case. Plus, we can say that it is pretty obvious what the fractional exponent is in this example. 1 divided by 5 is 0 0.2. However, when we need to take the 7th or 8th root of a number, it's preferable to use the 1 over x key first. For example, let's find the 7th root of 5. We press 5 then y to the power of x, followed by 7, then 1 over x. This equals 1.25. This simple trick saves you a lot of time and guarantees that you will not accidentally enter a wrong value. Excellent! Now let's examine the natural logarithm key. How do we use it in finance? Imagine that we have an investment and its holding period return for one year is 6.2%. What is the equivalent continuously compounded rate of return? Right, so we put it at 1.062 and then hit that LN key to get 0 0.0602. So, a continuously compounded rate of return of 6.02% would increase the value of the investment by 6.2% over the course of one year. Now, let's examine the second function of the LN key, e to the power of x. This function is the opposite of the natural logarithm. So, now that we know what the continuously compounded rate is, let's find an effective annual rate. Put simply, we would like to know by what percentage would a deposit grow over one year if the continuously compounded rate of return is equal to 6.02%. Let's see. We put 0 0.0602, then press second and e to the power of x key to obtain 1 0.0620. We subtract 1 to get 6.2%, which is the effective annual rate of return from before. Well done! Before we wrap this video up, let's learn how to store and recall numbers in the calculator. This technique is very useful when facing a complex problem, which needs to be calculated one step at a time. Firstly, if you want to store a displayed value, you need to press STO and then select a numeric key from 0 to 9. Therefore, the calculator has 10 memory registers we can use. Recalling a number is also easy. You press RCL followed by the numeric key under which we stored the value. An example would illustrate this better. Consider a problem related to the dividend discount model. What we will do is solve it in steps and store interim results. So, we have $10 divided by 1.10, which gives us 9.09. .09. Then we press STO followed by 1 to allocate the value to memory register 1. Then we have $12, discounted at 1.10, raised to the second degree, which results in $9.92. Similarly, we store the value to register 2. Here is a question. What would happen if we accidentally store the number in register 1? Well, 
the calculator will overwrite the old value, and it will no longer remember 10 divided by 1.10. This is very important to remember. All right, our next task is to divide 14.4 dollars by, open parenthesis, 0 0.12 minus 0 0.06, close parenthesis, divided by 1.10, raised to the power of 2. The result is $198.35. The last piece of the puzzle is to add all numbers together. The Texas Instruments BA2 Plus allows us to do this easily. We press plus recall 2, plus recall 1, followed by equal to obtain $217.35. The main reason we use the calculator store function is to avoid writing down interim results. When we sit for the CFA or FRM exam, every minute is important. Moreover, when you store your interim results, you can always double check them later. Imagine you're taking a multiple choice test and there's no answer choice that matches yours. Then you have to start over. Alternatively, if you've got the interim results stored, you can check each and find what you're missing. When you find the wrong value, you override the previous memory register and continue from there to get your answer. When you work with the calculator's memory function, it is always useful to examine what values are stored in it. To do this, you press second, followed by zero. Then you could scroll down and check the entries. If you don't need these entries anymore, you have two options to erase them. The first one is to overwrite the memory registers. And the second one is to delete these entries by pressing second, clear work. Well done. Next on our to-do list, time value of money problems. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next video.